Hi folks, Kevin here. Well, today I want to discuss the elements of good design, or at least the components that I believe need to be considered when we're taking on a design project. Now, some of these elements won't be appropriate for some of the small scale things like uh, designing a chicken tractor or designing a, a tool on the, on the farm or homestead, but certainly all of these elements need to be considered if we're going to be designing, let's say, a permaculture demonstration site and the various structures on the site. We need to consider the many of these elements when we're talking about designing our own home, if we want to have it be energy efficient and so on and so forth. So this is a list of things that I think are important to consider, uh, or at least I believe that they're important to consider when we're taking on a design project. First, it's all about the users, who they are and why they're actually coming there. We want them to feel invited by the design system, excited, delighted. We want it to be uniting. We want it to be able to build community, uh, encourage use. We want it to be inclusive socially, culturally, and environmentally. We want it to be easily accessible. We want it to be easy to work in. There's nothing more challenging than if we go into a structure that it's difficult to navigate through or we can, even our desk if we can't find the things that we need to do get the work done it's a frustration so we want it to be go beyond handicap accessible we want it to be handicap functional again some of these things are my design elements that i want to do on a larger scale for uh, community centers for uh, permaculture demonstration sites. So, so it goes beyond just our home. It has to do with many users. <clears throat> what about function? Well, we want it to empower the users and visitors. We want them to feel not just enabled, but we want to feel, have them feel a sense of, wow, I can accomplish much more than I ever thought I could accomplish. We want it to be encourage knowledge sharing. Once they've learned things, it's, it, we want them to feel the uh, uh, encouraged to go on out there and share these things that they've learned with their friends and family. We want it to, to encourage skill building. So the design system really needs to take into consideration, especially in a demonstration site, how are we going to inc encourage them to stay actively involved, to stay actively interested in what we're doing? And the design, the layout are all important for when we're trying to create these important components of an educational facility. We want it to be multifunctional. So like the uh, during inclement weather, you may want to have an educational room. And this is something I've been working on for a few years, trying to decide how can I make this one large gathering room be able to be, well, we can have uh, uh, guest speakers and doing presentations, we can do soap making, we can do herb, herb preps, we can do uh, constructing small, let's say, soil sifters to uh, seed sorters or teach some of the concepts of canning, pressure canning, water bath canning, and the list goes on. We want the, build, the, the structure, that great room, to be very adaptable to all the various functions on site. We want, this is so important to be environmentally responsible and healthy, uh, ecologically embracing, uh, embracing and inclusive. Uh, so we want to be less intrusive and less destructive. We've all seen those large construction sites where the whole, you know, the area's been clear cut all the topsoil has been pushed up into a big pile or hauled away. There's been big, uh, large equipment just totally defacing the area and not taking in, into account what was actually there beforehand. We need to be responsible for, for the natural resources that are there. We need to reduce greenhouse emissions. Utilize heavy equipment, certainly, when, when and where appropriate. We want to reduce petrochemically based materials whenever possible. Now, in the buildings that I built, I've, I've used reclaimed uh, materials, which are not bio-based. So they're uh, polyisocyanurate, a great insulation. But I've gone about constructing this, the buildings in such a way that they're not giving off uh, the harmful volatile organic compounds into the living areas. We, again, we want to reduce VOCs 
if at all possible, into the environments where we're going to be working or into the outside environments as well. We want to reduce the use of antimicrobials as well, whether it's uh, we're working with animals on site or whether we're working inside of a community room and there's antimicrobial soaps or, uh, or various uh, hand desanitizing uh, or sanitizing uh, uh, hand lotions and all really want to limit those, the use of those things. And, and that really requires us to be educators of the people who are using the systems because we don't need more antimicrobial resistance. Uh, certainly, we want to eliminate the use of halogenated flame retardants. That was a big corporate uh, push to get our government to mandate these flame retardants and all these materials in our households, which do my, far more harm than they do good. We want to use renewable resources whenever and wherever possible. We want to encourage responsible use of water. Again, a lot of this is education throughout the process. Encourage physical activity as part of everyday use. Certainly, the studies have shown the more that we're active and we're more mobile in our lifestyle and, and we need to incorporate that into our work environments as well, the healthier we're going to be as an end, end result of that increased physical activity. We want to encourage healthy choices uh, from what we eat, what we expose ourselves to, all along the way, and I'm not going to go deeply into any of these specific topics. These are just elements to consider when we're designing our system. We certainly want to use, go beyond just using a, a sustainable design. We want to do restorative, reparative, adaptive design uh, in our design process. We wanted to account for changes in our life and unique needs as we evolve. So certainly, small children, moms and dads with their small children going to a community center, well, they have specific needs. The elderly have specific needs. People who, are, who have, have been injured, uh, who are on crutches or in, uh, confined to wheelchairs, they have specific needs. Uh, so we need to take into account what are the what are the needs of our communities and how we're going to meet these needs based and and not be exclusive of people with with various changes in their life and their abilities. We need the the, the buildings and designs to be as energy efficient as possible and climate appropriate. Again, here in a cold temperate climate in the northern hemisphere, lots of southern exposure glass for nat uh, utilizing natural lighting and heating. Uh, we need to be, <laughs> our designs really, we need to make some tremendous advantage, uh, advances in this area uh, with some respect of historical, social, and cultural histories. Far too, too long uh, have we just gone ahead and, and not taken into consideration the indigenous people or the cultural significance of things that had happened in the environment. Yes, we, we have our uh, grave sites of war heroes that we are very respectful of, but there are Native American um, uh, forefathers, we are not as respectful of, of, of their uh, cultural and social uh, histories. So we need to take that much more seriously in our design process. We need to be both environmentally supportive and appealing. We need to, and, and again, that's, that's where we're more ecologically designed, design appropriate. Uh, we want the, the structures that we're building to, to, to be worthy of respect. Uh, we want to consider what are the unmet needs of the community that we're trying to address with this structure. What is it that we actually need? We don't build something for the sake of building it. We build something to address the need. Unfortunately, you know, often you know, structures are, are, are designed and built for profit only, for, the, for return on investment. And I really think we need to say, what is it that the users need? What does the community actually need? And take all of those things into consideration when we design a project. Uh, we need to, if we design the property to meet the unmet needs, well, that's going to encourage stewardship on community members. They're going to want to support 
the 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 the, des, the building design that we've uh, that we've created for them. We need to to in our design system we want to foresee possible long range uh, durability of the structure and so that it can adapt and grow as necessary to meet the evolving needs of the communities that we're designing the buildings in. Certainly we need to reclaim gray water on site. We don't need that going into some municipal uh, waste treatment system. Uh, it would be admirable if, if more of us could design systems where we're treating wastewater on site through living bioremediation systems like the Living Machine by Dr. John Todd. Uh, we want to bring the outside inside. You know, certainly there are many plants that can help to clean the air, not just reduce CO2, but re remove some of those no noxious chemicals that are in our more airtight environments. And why not produce some good healthy food inside uh, as well? So design for emergencies and catastrophes. If it's, if it's a, a structure where, you're, where you have enough room to meet, have, have large gatherings, why not design it also to be com uh, community supportive during times of need? I think we need to use very robust building materials and use really good pattern, as I've talked about before, pattern literacy in our design system. So we want to make these buildings strong enough to last, environmentally friendly, safe to work in and live in, and make, make them strong and durable. And again, climate appropriate. So we really want to consider, is it appropriate to put it on the side of a hill where there may be mudslides in the future? Is it appropriate to put this building in an area that's a flood zone? So we really want, besides being robust, let's think about the appropriateness of the design as well. With respect to technology, now this is another big area that I have a tremendous affection for. We need it, when we incorporate technology, we need to have people that aren't tech savvy be able, it, it, the design process to be intuitive, very, very user friendly. We want our design to monitor our water and energy consumption. We want to produce renewable energy, if at all possible, right on site. We want to monitor how much energy we're actually producing at what times of year and so on and so forth. Really keeping great data on what we're actually producing. We want to reduce the energy consumed on site as well. We want to use redundant power sources if at all possible so that we can keep the, 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 the structure uh, functioning without interruption during times of outages. We want to utilize the, the appropriate microclimates, and that includes coolers, refrigeration. Uh, I gave an example in the energy permaculture talk, um, uh, presentation rather, where I put my pre-storage uh, pre tanks for preheating water to uh, room temperature. I put that at the third floor of the house, which is really is in a functioning room. It's just an area where I have two 42-gallon tanks that brings up the temperature of the water before it goes into the hot water heater from you know the 46 to 48 degree groundwater temperature up to 89 degrees and then the hot water tank only has to heat it further from 89 degrees to 125 degrees. So realizing where is it going to be hot in, in, in this structure that we're, we're, we're designing? Where is it going to be coolest? And appropriately uh, installing or designing the appropriate utilities for those environments. We want to integra integrate security and monitoring system. This has really worked out great in, in my designs, far more. So I have security, surveillance, and monitoring systems. The monitoring systems, well, that is my surveillance systems help me to see what's going on with the animals, what's going on with the gardens, what actually happened over here. I see that somebody got into the garden, what actually happened there? I can go back and say, oh, it was a white-tailed deer. What can I do about that? What, what are my, my 
appropriate uh, actions that I can take in the future to prevent that from happening. So that's monitoring uh, systems. And your monitoring systems can be electronic. So if we have a water spill below a hot water tank, we can have some automation that automatically turns off the power to the electric hot water heater and turns off the water supply to that hot water tank. So that can happen without us being right there to detect it and, and prevent a lot of damaging damage in the environment. So that's a whole another large area that I could go off on. Integrating the Internet of Things and or the local network of devices. So we really want to integrate these together. And nowadays we can use Amazon Echo or Google Home to, to use voice activated assistance with using both of these things. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Internet of Things, but I think that that's going to evolve over time and be much more farm or homestead friend friendly. But certainly local network of devices I've utilized uh, significantly and that has helped me to maximize the productivity of myself uh, by automating many, many things uh, on site and incorporate automated environmental control as well. And that may be as simple as you know, in a greenhouse, we want to have the venting open up at, at an appropriate time, or we want to start taking the heat from the peak of the greenhouse down into the thermal mass unit down below. A whole variety of things as well. So I thought I'd just present this, this list of what I consider elements of good design. Uh, please give me some feedback if you think this list is helpful. Uh, this is posted on our website, mindfullivingsanctuary.com, and, uh, and I'll leave a link down below in the uh, description. Uh, please like and share this uh, video. Uh, it, 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 I hope that it's of benefit, and please leave a comment.